Welcome to Pokemon Infinite Fusion, the fan-made game with over 170,000 possible combinations, as well as over 50,000 custom sprites made by the community. Let me just say that some of these custom sprites are insane, so make sure you stay to the end of the video to see some of the coolest sprites this run has to offer. Because of how much you guys have asked for it, we're going to be doing a run using Porygon Fusions. So no matter what fusions we use, it has to use one of the three Porygon forms. Without wasting any more time, let's dive on into the video. Let's also try to hit 4,816 likes. We started this run by naming our rival Bruce. We then grabbed our first Porygon from Professor Oak, then lost to Bruce's double Roserade fusion. What a starter. We quickly ran an errand for Professor Oak, grabbed some Pokeballs from him, and went out to create our first fusions. We caught a bunch of different Pokemon and ended up combining this Ghastly with Porygon. By the way, with the updated game, the Fusions Maker is now listed underneath, which is an awesome addition. Thanks, Punko. We also fused Porygon 2 with a Caterpie, making this funny looking dude. The way we'll be doing this run is by starting out with a Porygon and a Porygon 2. After every gym, we'll be adding a new Porygon to the team, so after gym 1, we'll get a Porygon Z, and then another Porygon. That way we can see a bunch of different Porygon fusions. With our two new members on the team, we headed off through Viridian Forest and to Pewter City where we could grab our first badge and face Brock and his poison types. And before you start running to the comments to say, uh, Cosmic, Brock's a rock type gym. All gyms, trainers, and encounters are randomized. We're also set to hard mode, so the gyms and trainers are going to be somewhat overleveled the entire game. Anyways, we blasted through his gym trainers and went straight in. We barely managed to take out Brock's Nidojit with Poripee. We then go down to Ekbol's Bite and, unfortunately, this is when I realize I forgot to heal my team after the last battle, so Portly falls to Bite as well. Luckily, the second attempt, Poripee was able to take out Nidojit easily and we managed to outspeed and finish off his Ekbol with Psybeam, winning our first badge. Pori P evolved into Pori Pod after the battle, and we grabbed a Porygon Z from the box to fuse with this Gyarados. I love the glitch textures these spriders make. On our way to Cerulean City, we ran into a Nurse Joy and a trainer who'd recently been robbed in the nearby cave. Brock comes to look after the injured trainers and sends us into the cave to investigate. While exploring, we find a few more Pokemon and ran into Team Rocket running some sort of experiment. It involved Moonstones and three Pokemon? After interrupting and defeating the scientists they've taken hostage, the machine runs into some sort of issue and they flee with what they can. That's probably fine, I have more badges to collect anyways. So without reporting back to Brock, we ran to Cerulean City where our rival Bruce was waiting to challenge us again. His Loplu manages to knock out our Poridos and then is quickly knocked out by our Ghastly Fusion. Unfortunately, his starter then makes quick work of all of our Pokemon. Preparing for the rematch, we trained up a little and evolved our Poripod into Porifree, which looked amazing. We then headed back for round two. This time, Portly was able to knock out his Loplu without taking any damage. Then for some reason, Bruce switched into his Roserade Fusion and then back out to his Double Unknown, which eventually knocks us out with Hidden Power. Porifree then is able to come in and finish it off with Gust, as well as his Double Roserade. We then finish the battle by defeating his Gropal with Psybeam. With Bruce defeated, I decided to go to Misty's Bugchipe Gym to challenge her for her second gym badge. She led Han Pawn, and our Porydos was able to eventually take it out with Bite. We then were able to bring Belax down to red before it took us out with Body Slam, leaving an easy knockout and winning us our second gym badge. Time for a few fusions. We fused Porygon with Beedrill, making this adorable Minecraft bee, as well as Eradicate, making this computer mouse. Though I decided to go with this Onyx Porygon, making a fruit snake, and Scissor with Porygon 2, making this glitched out version of Scizor. From there, we headed north to help Bill unfuse himself from his Rhydon. Which begs the question, what Pokemon would you want to be fused with, and why? I can think of one or two. Anyways, comment down below and subscribe if you're enjoying the video. With nothing left to do here, we headed down south to Vermilion City. On our way, of course, we caught more Pokemon and made our way to the SSN. Once on the ship, we grabbed the key for the captain's quarters, battled this fisherman in his Golem Infernape fusion. Not really the type you'd want on a boat and for a fisherman, but whatever. And then on our way to the captain, we are stopped by Bruce wanting a rematch. Everyone say hi, Bruce. Hi, Bruce. Leading Hitmonerie, we decided to switch into Portly. Bruce then switches into Gliscol and he manages to take us out with acrobatics. Porydos was able to finish it off though with a bite and Metal Claw from Porizor finishes off his Hitmonerie and Drift You. Only his starter was left. Luckily, our Porizor 
Scizor nose recover, so he healed back up and we took it down with Metal Claw. Bruce runs off and we're able to help the sick captain and in return, we receive the HM cut. From there we head to the third gym, rummage through some trash cans, and find the button on the first try. Now it was time to face Surge's grass types. Pori Nix sets up stealth rocks but is quickly defeated. Luckily, Poridos comes in and knocks out his polygrowth with a bite flinch combo. We finish it off with Psybeam and Slugsor comes out and is also knocked out by Psybeam, leaving his final Pokemon, Ferrochick. Luckily again, we have Recover, so we're able to stall it out with confusions from Psybeam, winning our third gym badge. Time for a bunch of awesome fusions. Furret and Porygon 2 made this amazing striped digital monster. Aegislash's coated sword looked amazing. Though I just had to bring this one along as Big Hero 6 is one of my favorite newer Disney movies. Porygon and Wooper made this, literally, and Ponita looked absolutely gorgeous. We also evolved Ghastly into Haunter and headed back to the route where we caught some new Pokemon. We battled some trainers like this adorable Ponita fusion and this awesome Lopunny fusion and pressed forward to Rock Tunnel, eventually making it to Lavender Town. And like any good adventurer, I had to see what this big tower was. And there he was, waiting for us. Bruce led Togatris, and after several boosts, we take it down with Metal Claw as well as his starter. Bruce then sends out a Darkrai Otis fusion. Look at how smug he is. So to wipe the smug look off, we use Flame Wheel. Ryugius comes out and Poriter was able to knock it out with Shadow Punch, beating him once again. After our battle had concluded, we watched Old Man Fuji being escorted up the tower by Team Rocket. With no Sylph scope to pass the supposed ghosts, Bruce leaves. But I wanted to see what would happen if a ghost caught me, and you're just sent back. But what if you dodge them and make it all the way to the stairs? Nope, Gengar stops you and sends you back. Darn, guess I'll have to come back. Continuing our hunt for gym badges, we made our way to Celadon City. We found Erica outside on our way to her gym, and after hearing of Mr. Fuji's capture, she asks us to take down Team Rocket. They had apparently made a base in their city sewers, which is nasty, but we help her. We took down some strong grunts, made our way through a conveyor puzzle, and arrived just in time to watch Erica get beaten by Giovanni. We wouldn't let him get away. Our Porizor was able to do massive damage with Signal Beam, and though we are paralyzed, we knock out his Pika Slash with minimal damage. We then do almost nothing to Chinite, and Scizor faints. We then send out Baymax to minimize and reduce accuracy. We heal back up with Recover and take it down with Psybeam. Somehow we miss takedown several times and Slosis knocks us out with Zen Headbutt. Luckily, Poridos makes quick work of it with Bite, defeating Giovanni, and we sent him running. Erica invites us to her gym afterwards, and so we grab the Sylph Scope left behind and we head to face her and her dragon types? Her Kaikwaza fusion wrecks us until our Poridos gets a freeze with Ice Fang. Her Magmar fusion then knocks us out quickly, showing again how underleveled we are. In the city, we manage to find a link cable and evolve Haunter to Gengar, and we head back in to get defeated again and again. I start to wonder how I'm going to be able to beat it with this current team I have. We even managed to make it to her final Pokemon Rayiri, and it proves to be just as strong as the other dragons. We started getting overleveled because of just how many attempts it took to take on this gym. On attempt number 14, we managed to get a critical hit with Ice Fang from our Gyarados. We then used Aqua Tail and we are able to knock out Magon after surviving an earthquake. Poridos is then able to weaken her Rayuri and use up her Citrus Berry with Ice Fang, putting us in a great position. Porygar comes in and does almost nothing with Payback, and then is knocked out by Air Slash. Luckily, our Scizor Fusion was able to survive an Air Slash and knock out her final Pokemon with Slash, winning our fourth gym badge after way too many battles. With four badges in hand, I decide it's time for more fusions. Jirachi made this cute little pop-up window while Lopunny made less cute pop-ups. Guys, I swear, it's not what it looks like. Agron's head was glitching off its body while Roserade looked amazing. Gardevoir made more ads. What are you looking at? I'm just reversing the fusion. Get out of here. Go, shoo. There, that is much better. Delibird made Iron Bundle and Gallade was playing VR Beat Saber. Primeape was just trying to have a good time while Eevee was not. Then I had no idea what this Politoed fusion was, but I loved it. With all these awesome fusions, here's the ones we added to the team, and we headed back to the tower to save Mr. Fuji. At the top of the tower, we defeated this ghost girl and her Ram Toys, which was a cool fusion, and then found Mr. Fuji doing just fine. He randomly gives us a Pokeflute and sends us back on our adventure. 
As we head south, we battle some fishermen with this amazing Bastiodon fusion, as well as this Machamp Dragonite, and suddenly we run across to sleeping Snorlax blocking the road. What do you know? The Poke Flute we had from Mr. Fuji helps wake it up and we run it off. Janine then invites us to fight her father Koga, the next gym leader, so that's exactly what we do. His fire types don't stand a chance. Koga leads Blazus, and after a cover stalling our Porylade, he switches out. Skiplift stands no chance and we knock it out with close combat. We then manage to get his Maguar into red before being knocked out by Lava Plume. Poriate finishes it off but unfortunately gets burned, which allows Comer... Comer? Comer? This to knock us out. Luckily our Poritoad was able to take it out and his Latios fusion was easily knocked out with Bubble Beam, winning our fifth gym badge. Like I said, didn't stand a chance. Since we were in the area, we took some time to catch some more Pokemon in the Safari Zone. Like this Mewtwo, and caught it first ball. The Safari Zone is crazy for these types of games. We also evolved Ponita into Rapidash and made our way to Saffron City for our sixth gym badge. Though it looked like there was an issue with Team Rocket going on, so we made our way to Silphco, the center of all the issues. After saving all the innocent people inside, battling our way through some grunts, we finally made it to where Giovanni was. You know, Bruce, this is probably the worst possible moment you could have chosen for a battle. But you know what? Boom! Bang! Whoop pa pa pow Uh, zoom! Skadoosh! Anyways, as I was saying, now it was time to face Giovanni. Unfortunately, his Dragonite Bisharp fusion quickly took out our own Rose Raid, but we retaliated with Moonblast from Gardevoir. Snubno finishes off his Roserade Grovile fusion and his Klaatu and Suntrip both quickly fall to Moonblast, beating this boss again. With that, it was time for the next gym challenge. Sabrina's flying types proved to be a little harder than expected. Her Cliftine refused to fall to Discharge from Porydash and even managed to take out Porylade with Air Slash. Our Politoed finally took it out, but was knocked out by Docrow, leaving our Roserade to fall to his adorable Cubat. Our second attempt, we led our Politoed, and after a switch, we were able to take out Docrow as well as Cubat. Porydash was then able to come in and quickly faint, as did our Gallade Fusion, but it brought it to red. Then, our Roserade Fusion was able to finish it off, leaving only Ponogy to fall to Discharge. Six badges down, two to go, which brings us to Cinnabar Island. We ran to the basement of the Pokemon Mansion where Blaine was waiting. After getting him back to the gym, we headed in to face off against this rock-type Pokemon. His first Pokemon, Ligma, don't need to make a joke, manages to take out Porydash with Earth Power, but our Gallade Fusion takes it out with Leaf Blade. His Duskull Fusion, Dudude, falls quickly to Leaf Blade. His Axe Cargo then quickly falls to Moonblast from Porivor. After dealing massive damage with Gallade's close combat, we finish off his Dark Star with Moonblast, and easily we have our 7th Gym Badge. After defeating Blaine, I wandered around the island and witnessed Team Rocket stealing this man's boat and headed off to Mount Ember. I knew I couldn't just leave him be, so we decided to brave the wild currents, run straight into the mountain where I knew Giovanni's plan was unfolding. His triple fusion experiment from earlier, as well as Silphco and their Master Ball technology, was all so that he could fuse the three legendary birds into a beast named Zap Mulcuno. With three health bars, one assigned to each head, as well as being able to attack with each head every turn, this beast was unlike anything we'd faced yet. We started the battle to finally defeat Giovanni, and then I realized we were 12 levels behind this thing. It quickly finished us off, but we did a decent amount of damage overall. We took some time, grinded up our levels, and went back to stop his plan for real this time. By using Discharge to hit all three heads, our Roserade, Rapidash, and Politoed fusions managed to weaken the beast, especially thanks to the paralyses that we were getting. Our Gallade fusion then sacrificed himself using close combat to take out Articuno, leaving two heads to go. With Primeape out, we went for Thrash to maximize damage and finishing off Moltres, defeating the monster and winning the battle's second try. With Giovanni now defeated and his master plan ruined, he fled back to his gym. So it was time for us to follow him back and beat him down one last time. Or so I thought. His ghost type team proved to be quite a challenge. On our first attempt, we were able to knock out Chandelure by using Discharge with Roserade. Then Gallade made quick work of his Rotom Curlia fusion. Suddenly, his band trio came out and it managed to wreak havoc on my team with his fast and powerful earthquakes. Finally, Poriape was able to take it out, but by then it was too late, and Cofanium finished us off with Body Slam. We went in again and again 
and again. And honestly, I lost count of how many times we were defeated. His Bantrio was just too strong. On an attempt somewhere far in the future, we managed to knock out his Chandelure with Night Slash, but got burned in the process. We then barely managed to take out his Curly Erodum, and his Bantrio was sent out. I thought we were done for once again. But for some reason, Giovanni got greedy and used Fissure and missed. This let us do some decent damage before we fainted to burn, allowing us to send in Porytoad as he healed, which allowed us to get off two Surfs for free, knocking out Bantrio without it doing any damage. His Cofanium then managed to tank our hits to bring Porytoad down to 14 HP, but somehow between confusion and paralysis, it managed to not attack for three turns in a row, and it allowed us to knock it out. Finally, his last Pokemon, Faragar, went down to Poriape's Outrage, which meant we had won our final gym badge and defeated Giovanni for the last time. This meant only one thing stood in our journey's way, the Elite Four. On our way to Victory Road, we ran into Bruce one more time, his Mucarp going down easily to Roserade's Discharge. Psyorb stood no chance to try attack, and Mamtoom almost knocked out Porydash, but we managed to land a Fire Blast and knocked it out. Gallade was then able to take Aglar to Red, and Poriate finished it off. Electoise tried to take us out with Explosion, but we survived only to be taken out by his Mega Roserade. We then sent out our own Roserade and managed to burn it with Tri-Attack. We then took it out, beating Bruce and allowing us to make our way to Victory Road. We then arrived at the Indigo Plateau, which as you guys know by now means a ton more fusions. Hey guys, if you've been enjoying the video so far, consider subscribing as less than 3% of my viewers are currently subscribed. And also, if you want to take part in choosing our next runs and staying up to date in community news, check out the Discord in the description. Anyways, back to fusions. Girafferig and Porygon became this awesome Mario and Chain Chomp reference, while Fortress became a Shulker box from Minecraft. Quillfish was also a Guardian. Steelix looked insane, and oh, did you think we were done with Minecraft references? No, no. Macargo? Nah. Obsidian and Lava. And its reverse has a freaking Nether portal on its back. Love these references. Mamoswine looked like this goofy dude, and Luxray looks. Cyberpunk? I'm not sure what this was supposed to be, but it is awesome. Kling Klang becomes some sort of robot. Don't know what this is. And Darkrai looks like. well, sassy. Cofagrigus possesses a Game Boy, and Klefki becomes a paperclip from my childhood. If you guys know the name of this one, make sure to drop it down in the comments below and age yourself. Torterra is playing Pac-Man on his back, and for those of you that know Digimon, here's Charmeleon and Charizard. I believe these are referring to Digimon. Golem makes this, and Kabutops looks insane, a possessed skeleton. Dragonite looks adorable, and Typhlosion's flames seem to be glitching out. Slugma is... Well, anyways, Aegislash becomes a Minecraft sword wielding a pickaxe and shield, and Zoroark is trying to break through the game. Finally, Rayquaza is absolutely insane. With that, we made our team. Here's a quick recap. Comment if you would have used someone else, and sorry, I forgot to name them this time, but I would have named Luxray Saber, the sword's name would have been Steve, Rayquaza would have been Mainframe, the paperclip, well, you can find the name in the comments. Unless I'm the only one who knows who he is. Torterra would be Arcade, and Dragonite is my buddy. It was finally time for the Elite Four and to see our team in action. First up was Lorelei's Ghost Pokemon. Our Minecraft sword slashed through her Honrock with Shadow Ball, and after using Recover and King Shield, we weakened Feral Lurk's attack enough that she had to switch out. Crooklet then went down quickly to Shadow Ball with no issue, and she brought Feral Lurk back out. I couldn't stall him again, so I switched into Portray and we were quickly knocked out by Earthquake. Iron Head then knocked out Torterra and it wasn't looking good. Our Dragonite took massive damage, but luckily snagged a freeze with Ice Beam, which I think is only like a 10% chance, and we finished it off. Mopet then took a Dragon Rush and knocked us out on 1 HP, but then quickly fell to our Paperclip's Kiss. Play Rough was then able to knock out Drift Palm and we had beaten the first member. With Bruno using Psychic types, we let our Paperclip to set up spikes. It did its job and after fainting, our Rayquaza came in and used Air Slash to knock out Jump Poke. But it switched before we could finish it off. 
Muvar then came in and we barely managed to take it out with a tri attack and extreme speed. Ezekin then came out, took us out with Brave Bird as well as Sky Uppercutting our Luxray, but then we were able to send in Pori Slash. We unfortunately get burned, but we did take it out with Shadow Ball and Jump Poke faints to spike damage. His next Pokemon, Eschew, managed to survive as we fall to burn, but Arcade was able to come in and takes it out with Earthquake, leaving his final Pokemon, Mr. Wrath, who also stood no chance against Earthquake, and we won our second battle. Agatha has finally randomized this run and is using Steel-type Pokemon. We managed to get a couple layers of spikes up before Coratrice knocks us out, and Luxray comes in dealing massive damage with Discharge, and even paralyzes it, causing her to switch. She sends in Kofank, who falls to Discharge, and her third Pokemon, Meditar, comes in ready for battle. It knocks us out with Earthquake, so we send in Rayquaza, but it falls too to Crunch. Luckily, Torterra comes in and is able to take it out with an Earthquake of her own. Then, barely surviving a Hydro Pump from Quillseed, we're able to take it down as well. Jeerleaf comes in, knocks us out with Solar Beam, and then uses Healing Wish to heal up Coratrice, but it does nothing as we knock it out with Shadow Ball. Three down, one to go. Lance's normal types end up being the easiest of the Elite Four as he leads with a Porygon of his own. We set up Spikes as always, and Poriflora switches into Milgon, who quickly falls to Rayquaza's extreme speed. Suitler then comes in, knocks us out, but in turn falls quickly to Dragonite's Ice Beam. Zotret falls to Ice Beam as well as Poriflora, and even this cool shaped Parasect after missing Zap Cannon falls to Tri Attack, beating the Elite Four, which means there's time for one final showdown against our rival for the title of champion. In this battle, Bruce leads Jintera and manages to knock out our little paperclip before it gets spikes all the way up. We then were able to send out our own Torterra fusion and completely choke as we use Earthquake against a levitating Pokemon. We instead send in Rayquaza to Dragon Dance all the way up, and use Air Slash to finish it off. Amphibole comes in, and while a cool dude in a leather jacket, it falls to extreme speed. Shendarion then Flare Blitzes and we faint. Luckily, they didn't have Levitate this time, so Earthquake knocks it out, and Bruce returns a favor by knocking us out with his Loop Loom. Luxray does decent damage, but is defeated by Petal Dance. Steve then comes out, and with King Shield and Shadow Ball, we are able to scare him into switching into Execufa Rig. Some of these names are crazy. Unfortunately, he knocks us out, leaving only one Pokemon left, our Dragonite. We manage to knock out his Execufa Rig with Ice Beam, and Bruce's Lugia Fusion comes in. It takes a little damage from Spikes and faints to Ice Beam as well. It was now a 1v1. Goofy Dragonite versus Mega Roserade. We tank some magical leaves, and with two ice beams, we manage to knock it out, defeating Bruce once and for all and succeeding at becoming a champion with only Porygon fusions. Mm -hmm. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, check out some of our other fusion videos as well. Consider joining our Discord community where we will vote and discuss on future projects and videos. And again, thank you for watching. Consider subscribing and peace.